I believe in finishing what you've started, even if you don't really want to. I didn't used to believe this. I often found myself becoming tired or bored or annoyed with something I was doing, and I stopped it. It didn't matter how long I was doing it or how much time and energy I'd placed into it. If I didn't want to do it anymore, I simply quit. After seven years, the beginnings of a trombone performance major, and hours upon hours upon hours upon hours of practicing, I quit trombone. This quitting character trait seems to run in my family, and the poster child for this is my father. Whenever I mention to my mother that I've quit something new, she reminds me of my father. My father wanted to get a doctorate in ornithology from the University of Maine, but before I get into that, I need to tell you about the spruce budworm and the boreal forest. The boreal forest is located in the northeastern region of the United States and the southeastern region of Canada, and the spruce and fir trees that make it up are viable commercial goods. The spruce budworm is an endemic species to the forest. The boreal forest experiences a population explosion of spruce budworm every 40 to 60 years, jumping from endemic to epidemic levels. The budworms are one of the most destructive native insects for spruce and fir trees, and these population explosions will last for several years. The budworm destroy trees slowly over the years, and this has a tremendous economic impact on the region. The United States Forest Service was studying ways to control the spruce budworm population. This is where my father comes in. My father's research focused on the impact of birds as predators of spruce budworm. Basically, what he wanted to find out was whether or not the birds in Maine could help keep the spruce budworm population under control. He did laboratory and field research. In the lab, he raised budworms from eggs and set up a room where he could raise, release myrtle warblers, downy woodpeckers, and blue jays and count how many budworm they ate depending on the density that he predetermined. For his field work, he caught birds and injected alcohol into their stomachs to stop digestion. He then gave the birds to the entomologist on his research team, who removed the birds' stomach contents and counted specific parts to determine how many budworms the birds had eaten over a period of time. The point of all this is that my father spent two years of his life doing this research. He gave the draft of his thesis to his committee and started the waiting game. It wasn't until two months before he and my mother would have moved to Oklahoma before he started asking questions. One member said he did not have enough research. His mentor said he may not have enough research, but what did it matter? Could he defend it in front of the committee? My father, after two years of his life, after one vote away from a doctorate, simply threw up his arms and said, to hell with it. I transferred to the University of Missouri because I overheard someone mentioning good things about the School of Journalism. I didn't want to be a journalist. The thought never crossed my mind. But for as long as I could remember, I wanted to be a writer. And then I spent the summer at the Columbia, Missouri, and I discovered reporting was really the last thing I wanted to do. It was then I decided to take the prerequisite courses to apply to the accelerated program at the Sinclair School of Nursing at Mizzou. It seemed like a random choice, but when I thought about it, some parts of me always wanted to go into the medical profession. What could I accomplish if I just made myself go through with it? Writing was a safety net for me. It was easy to do, and I was good at it, but I really wanted a challenge. So I enrolled in said science classes, one of them being medical pharmacology. It was, if you'll pardon the phrase, a whole new world. There is this harmony found in so many aspects of pharmaceuticals, and the amount of information involved is almost overwhelming. Therapeutic index and window, efficacy, potency, selectivity, agonist, partial agonist, competitive and non-competitive antagonist, first pass effect, interhepatic recirculation, one compartment model, two compartment model, analgesics, anesthetics, anti-anxiety, anticoagulants, antidepressants, antipsychotics, the list continues farther than I ever imagined. This class was the most challenging I've ever taken, and I couldn't wait for it. I finally found what I wanted to do with my life. I found something that both challenged me and that I was relatively good at. I found my calling, if you will. I wanted to be a pharmacist. I'm going to be a pharmacist. Yet, I'm currently 12 hours away from a bachelor's of journalism. I've spent almost four years on it, and I can't stop now. I can't do what my father did. Even if I'm not going to use the degree, it would be really nice to have. So, I'm going to finish and graduate from the University of Missouri School of Journalism. And in the meanwhile, I'll be taking pre-pharmacy classes. I'm going to go through with it, even if I know for certain that I'm not going to be a reporter. I am, for once in my life, finishing something I've started and not just throwing up my arms and saying, to hell with it.